Hello, everybody. So, uh, when I talked about the new approach I was going to take to the RPG engine, uh, people recommended that I should probably go ahead and make a small project first. And they were right. Um, they weren't right for the just the same reason they thought they were. They, they were that, right, that reason was good, but also uh, there is another reason that they were right, and that is that Unity has changed the game. I don't know when this happened, because I'm pretty sure I looked like, uh, you know, Christmas time, and this was not the case. But they completely changed the game, and that means that I have to rethink how I'm going to be doing things. Well, I'm beating about around the bush a little bit, but what am I talking about? I'm talking about the way that scriptable objects and prefabs work in Unity events. So the big idea with a scriptable object is that it's global. Um, so these three scriptable objects are templates, which they contain all of the details needed for any given object, a centered sand floor, for example. The description, the name, the work hours, the energy required. But you can put all that stuff in a mono behavior and slap it on a game object. And that's what, that's what I normally do. And obviously, that's a really easy approach, so why would you do it this way? The reason you do it this way, there are a couple of, of reasons, but the big one is because it used to be uh, that when you wanted to add it to a Unity event, say let's add it here and let's drop the floor centered sand here, you actually have full access to the stuff in it. All the functions are available to you. So you can build in all sorts of custom functions and then just wire them together uh, even though you haven't instantiated anything. And that's really important if you're talking about things like, oh, this is a farmer, a specific farmer, this is a specific king, and we want these people to have these specific interactions, and we want to be able to wire them together without opening up a scene, and only one of them is in the scene, so the other one can't be accessed, and scriptable objects really do avoid that. It used to be that that was the only way you could do it. But sometime recently, and again, I don't know when, real recently, they changed it. And now you can access prefabs the same way, even if they're not instantiated. Well, it pretty much changes everything. Um, it means that I don't have to use scriptable objects except in situations where they make sense. And now, the only times when scriptable objects make sense are when we're talking about something that's never instantiated. For example, a resource like electricity or heat. Or a thought, maybe. Uh, things that don't actually enter the game world. Um, as, as objects. Those are still going to be useful as scriptable objects, but now there's no reason to have scriptable objects for the vast majority of the things I was going to make into scriptable objects, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad to have been wrong, because it makes things so much easier. The only way that Unity could make it easier for me now is if they let me use interfaces. They still don't, though. That I checked yesterday. Anyhow, um, I wanted to just tell you Small changes to a technical system can really change your, your approach. You can have a completely different approach. It can be much easier or much harder based on relatively small details. And I wanted to explain that Unity does have some competitors. It has com Game Maker as a competitor, for example. But that's not what I'm going to recommend. Game Maker just got bought, so things might be dicey for a while. You have to wait and see what falls out there. But yeah, we also have the Unreal Engine, which is something you can use for free. The Unreal Engine doesn't have a powerful store behind it yet. The Unity Asset Store, um, I use a lot. But the Unreal Engine doesn't have a powerful asset store behind it yet. What it does have is it's got a much better pipeline for high-res graphics. So if you are a modeler, first and foremost, or if you have a lot of access to that sort of stuff, you maybe try that. Now, both Unity and uh, Unreal can, can do the same things, but the Unreal Engine does have very different technical details, and it really does change what is easy and what is hard. This is impossible in the Unreal Engine, as far as I know. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm going to continue using Unity for a, a while yet. I'm not going to make the switch over to Unity 5 until it's available to the public, which I think it still isn't. I have access to it. I've had access to it for a long time now. But there's no reason for me to switch over if my tutorials uh, can't be followed. Anyway, uh, also the new Unities broke the terrain. I don't know what they did, but it doesn't work right anymore. Boo-hoo! I guess this makes up for it. I'd rather build my own terrain and have Unity events that work properly. 
Thanks for your time.